Come on, camera. Just stay there. That's better. Whew. Hey there, it's me, Dot. Sorry about the way. It took me a while to get things set up here at Connect HQ. Really, camera? I had you in the perfect spot. Good. Now stay. Now, like I was saying, we thought... No! Stop it! I no! We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Okay, I think we're good. We just got some new camera equipment, and I'm still figuring out how it all works. Anyway, we just got a postcard. Let's see what question we're answering today. Dear Connect HQ, I know that God created the world, but I have lots of questions. First, how did he make the world? Second, did he really make everything? Third, is he still making things today? Signed, Nina. Wow, Nina, I love these three questions. They're so good, and I'm really glad you asked them. It's important for us to know things like this and to ask a trusted friend or adult if you don't know the answer. You know what? Jake and I were just talking about God's creation last week. Here, let me show you what happened. Well, at least your alarm went off at the right time. At least your ride remembered to pick you up this morning. At least the neighbor's dog didn't chase you around the block twice. At least you don't have plate cleaning duty. All the plates are covered in syrup. At least I think it's syrup. Hey, how's everything going in here? Fine. Fine? Really, fine? Dot and I are trying to get everything ready for the group that's gonna tour HQ later today. But we both had pretty tough mornings. Ooh. Tough mornings? This whole week has been bad. Just one thing right after the other. Yeah, it sounds like my week last week it was pretty rough. Woof. But you seemed so happy last week. You threw that birthday party for Maurice and everything. Oh yeah, but... Do you guys want to know how I stay happy even when things are hard? Yes. yes. Well, what I do is I think about the biggest thing and the smallest thing that I can thank God for because God created everything. And so God's words create life. And when I think about that, it just makes the world seem like a better place. God's words create life. I like it. Maybe that kind of thinking could help us turn our mood around before the tour group gets here. You know what, Jake? I have an idea. Why don't we have a contest? It's always a contest. Always a contest. A contest to see who can come up with the biggest thing and the smallest thing to thank God for. Fine, but only because I want to be ready for the tour. Yes! Good luck. So we're looking for the biggest and smallest good things God's made here at HQ? Not just at HQ. What? <laughs> We're looking for the biggest and smallest good things God's made, period. Ever? Ever. Come on, let's put this computer to good use. Let's start with the big stuff. What's something big and awesome and amazing that God's made? Maybe an elephant? What about a giraffe? Elephants weigh more than giraffes. Yeah, but giraffes are taller than elephants. We'll call it a tie. And I think we're thinking too small. We need something bigger. Something like a California redwood. They can grow to be 350 feet tall and weigh over a million pounds. A million! Why stop there? What about a mountain? Mount Everest is over 29,000 feet tall. That's almost five and a half miles. I like the way you're thinking. Now, let's go even bigger. happened here? Did somebody graph caramel to a plate? Well, you guys look happier. You were right, Mike. Finding the big, amazing things God's made really did help our mood. I'm feeling so much more ready for today's tour. Oh, that's awesome. Well, the question that I have and I'm dying to ask is, who won? 
Jake, on a technicality. A technicality? What technicality? My final answer was the universe, but we decided the universe is a bunch of smaller things instead of one big thing, so it shouldn't count. That's true. So what was the final answer? I said Canis Majoris, one of the biggest stars in the sky. It's 17 times bigger than the sun. Yeah, yeah, we get it. I love that. Canis Majoris in everything in the universe. God created it all with just his words. And that's just, that reminds me of a Bible link in the archive. Do you guys want to watch it with me? Let's sure. do it. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. Is alive. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before God started creating, everything was dark and empty. But then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God's words were so powerful, they created light out of nothing, and the light was good. God separated the light from the dark and he called the light day and the dark night. This was the very first day. And after that, God kept creating. On day two, God created the skies and the heavens. On day three, he made seas and oceans, dry lands, and all kinds of plants and trees. On day four, he made the sun, the moon, and every star we can see in the sky. On day five, God started making animals, he created every fish that swims in the sea and every bird that flies in the air. On day six, God created all of the creatures that walk on land, like dogs, horses, elephants, and even people. At the end of the sixth day, God looked at everything he had created. All of it, every single thing was very good. God knew his work was finished, which meant at the start of day seven, God didn't get back to work. Instead, he blessed the seventh day and rested from all the good work he had done. It's just so amazing to think about. God's words create life. They're just that powerful. When God created the world, with every word he spoke, he created something new, something living, something good. Can you imagine what it would be like to have that kind of power? I could say puppy and boom, I'd have a puppy. I could have unlimited puppies. They'd be so teeny and tiny and cute. It's probably a good thing that we don't have that kind of power. That would be a lot of puppies to take care of. True. That would be a lot of puppies. But you know what? That reminds me. Weren't you guys supposed to find something small? Wasn't that a part of the competition? We tried to find small things. But who wants to think about things like dust or bugs when you can think about stars and planets and the universe instead? Hmm. Oh, I, I see where you guys are coming from. But how about we head to the rad room? Hmm? Okay. Hey, Professor Marie, it's so great to have you back from NASA. Well, I am happy to be back. What can I help you with? Well, you see, Jake and Dodd here have a competition going, thinking about the biggest and the smallest things God has ever created. Ooh, I like this. Tell me more. We had a lot of fun coming up with the biggest stuff. I said Canis Majoris. Oh, what an inspired answer. Did you know Canis Majoris is 17 times bigger than the sun? Yes, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, let's get moving. Okay, so they're having a little bit of a problem thinking of the smallest thing because they think small things are boring. Everything okay? I have so many things I'd like to tell you, but I think it would be much more interesting if I showed you. Just give me some time to put some things together. Sure. Done. Finally. Nice. So did we ever figure out what was exactly stuck to those plates? Nope. 
Dot? Um, I uh, just remembered uh, an experiment Walt and I tried a few days ago. Oh, and what was that? We uh, just wanted to see, you know, what happened when you microwave cotton candy. Dot! <laughs> it was so cool. But I guess we just forgot to clean up after ourselves. Nice. Oh, hey! Professor Marie sent the video. You guys want to check it out? Everything you can see in the universe, it was all created by God. All of it. From the Pacific Ocean to the little fish that swim there. From the vast Sahara Desert to the little foxes that call it home. From the gigantic star Canis Majoris to the billions of smaller stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. Everything was created through God's powerful words. But what about the things we can't see? There's a world of stuff out there too small for us to look at on our own. The Bible even tells us this. I have a verse I'd like to teach you from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 16. It goes like this. Colossians 1, 16. He created everything that can be seen and everything that can't be seen. So what is the Bible saying when it says God created things that can't be seen? It's talking about things like microscopic life, cells, atoms, waves of sound and light that can travel huge distances in an instant. Even the spiritual world, like heaven and angels, they were created by God too. All of these invisible things work in perfect harmony inside and alongside the large things God's created. All of creation, no matter how big or small, can show us how great our God is. <sighs> that was amazing. Right? I didn't even think about things like cells or sound waves. God created all those things too, and they're incredible. You know what the coolest part is? God's not done creating. What do you mean? Think about it. When we choose to follow Jesus and make him the leader of our life, and we put our trust in him, God creates in us a new life. He gives us a new friendship with him and a new heart that lives for his good way. So we're surrounded by all the good things God's made all the time, both around us and inside of us. Yep, that's it. Do you want to look for more big and small things God's created? Maybe we could even share them with the folks on the tour. That's a great idea. Let's do it. So Nina, back to your awesome questions about creation. Do you remember that verse that Professor Marie taught Jake and me? The one from the book of Colossians? Why don't we say it together? It goes like this. Colossians 1.16. He created everything that can be seen and everything that can't be seen. God is the creator of everything. The whole world is full of the good things he created, both visible and invisible. When God made the world in the beginning, he used his words to create everything we can see. Isn't that amazing? God's words are so powerful, they're able to bring new, good, living things into existence. But God didn't just create the things we can see. There are all kinds of tiny, invisible things he brought to life too. Microscopic life, cells, atoms. God made all of life, big and small, to work together in harmony. And the best news is, God is still creating. When we choose to follow Jesus, He creates new life in us. He gives us a new friendship with Him and a new heart that follows His good way. Don't forget, God's words create life. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. I had so much fun microwaving cotton candy the first time, I had to try it again. Look. It smells so good. Wonder what other things Walt and I could try to microwave. After we asked Captain Alyssa for permission, of course. What if we tried microwaving jelly beans? Would they just completely melt? What would it all taste like together? What if we tried microwaving gummy bears? Mike might not like them. Don't worry, I'll make sure to clean up my mess this time. God has created every good thing in this universe, and He wants to create new life in us too. If you've never made the choice to follow Jesus with your whole life, you can do that today. All you have to remember are the ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. 
B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice today? If so, congratulations. Be sure to talk about it with a parent or a leader you trust.